The growing resentment of the colonists against British control culminated in a dramatic display of rebellion in Boston Harbor called the Boston Tea Party. It all started in 1773, when Britain wanted to save one of its prominent companies, the East India Tea Company, from bankruptcy. It allowed that company to sell surplus tea directly to colonists, bypassing colonial merchants along the way. The colonists were furious. As they saw it, Britain was trying to give a British company a monopoly on American soil. And by bypassing the American tea merchants who traditionally collected taxes, it was cheating the Americans out of money. The colonists decided to boycott East India tea, but for some colonists, a boycott didn't go far enough. Samuel Adams, one of the leaders of the Sons of Liberty, a vigilante group intent on protecting colonial rights, saw the tax on tea as an opportunity to rally support against British rule. Adams had organized groups of colonial patriots throughout the colonies to exchange information and monitor British activities. They were called the Committees of Correspondence and would be crucial in setting up the Boston Tea Party. Sam proceeded to set up these committees of correspondence, and they started writing uh, back and forth uh, in the different colonies, saying we must stop this. Uh, he worked everybody up into quite a state of anger. And when the tea finally arrived, the tax tea from, from the East India Company, Sam was ready. In Boston, the unpopular governor, Thomas Hutchinson, an American appointed by the Crown, ordered the ships to remain in the harbor until the tea was unloaded. On December 16, 1773, Samuel Adams and the Sons of Liberty organized about 100 Bostonians, disguised themselves as Indians, and boarded the ships. They chopped open the tea and threw it all into Boston Harbor, destroying a, quite a lot of money. Onlookers cheered as Boston Harbor became an enormous teapot. Governor Hutchinson fled the city, never to return. Not a single ounce of the several thousand chests of tea shipped by the East India Company ever reached colonial stores. There were tea parties in other colonies, but no, nothing quite as dramatic and, and as expensive as the Boston Tea Party. In Philadelphia and New York, mass demonstrations forced tea-bearing ships to return to England with their cargo hold still full. In Annapolis, protesters burned both the tea and the ships, chanting liberty and independence, or death in pursuit of it. Outside of Massachusetts, radical colonists burned tea leaves in solidarity with Boston. Others shook their heads at the destruction of private property and the breakdown of law. The British Parliament was outraged by this blatant act of rebellion and proceeded to slap the colonists with a new set of laws called the Intolerable Acts. They were designed to bring the colonists to their knees, but instead spurred them closer to the battle for independence. 